everybody. Welcome to another episode of Starless Confidential. Today's guest is Brianna Bowman, the lead actress in the recent short film Buttercup. Welcome to the show, Brianna. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm sorry to be here. Yeah, it's great to be finally be in 2021, am I right? Absolutely. We can just put that all behind us and see what, what's going to be in store. <laughs> Indeed. So, as far as for today's topic, we're going to be discussing about the recent movie Wonder Woman 84, because given the day it came out, this was a chance to kind of escape all the um, political uh, troubles and other stuff that's happened in the past year. So I wanted to ask, what is what are your thoughts on the movie as a whole? As a whole, I think it's great to address a concept that's kind of, um, it's well talked about and kind of familiar about what would it be like if everyone got whatever they wanted, um, but they put like a new skin on it and it kind of makes you realize a bit more just the gravity of what it's really like. Um, so that was good. I felt like overall the delivery and some things it was kind of weak they had some great concepts but it's just like it was I'm not entirely sure how to think about it it's like it was great but I feel like it could have been it could have been better honestly yeah because I mean when I think of how the bad guys plan came about it made me think of Jafar from Aladdin when he wished to be a genie I mean yeah that's basically it it's like you know it, it it kind of goes to that concept of like, you know, you're a genie, you can get, you know, what you wish for, but be careful what you wish for because there's consequences, all of that. Yeah, although being able to grant whatever you want and then choosing what to take, that's not a bad deal either. Minus yeah, no, that's that's clever how they did that, making um, Maxwell become the wishing stone. So it, it's interesting, like, how already he knew that, like, the, the role that he had to take on the consequences, but he was willing to do it because he was just that power hungry. But it's interesting to say like, you know, here are the consequences I choose. Um, it's interesting, I like, wonder like what that does to a person. I mean, we see, but still. Yeah, plus the scale of how his wishing power, although with a few plot holes besides how it affected pretty much like the whole world, it may, makes you think that the initials are pretty accurate because people have always been mentioning to me like doesn't it seem like a world war instead of wonder woman how it's titled but it actually kind of makes sense it could have been one yeah well i guess that's funny you mentioned that in a way it's like you know a war against the world against everyone else's wishes and trying to get your own way because if you think about it the world wars it was everyone you know all these different countries trying to do what they thought was best to get like, you know, the, the perfect world for them to live in and it conflicted with each other. So those paralleled those concepts very well. Yeah, because from the first movie, Wonder Woman thought that what, what happened in the first world war is that everyone's fighting just because of Ares, the god of war, that he plagued men's hearts to do unspeakable things because Zeus created them to be trust, trustworthy and good. Right. But but as she goes through her adventure with fighting for World War I, she realizes it's not so cut and dry, that everyone has to make their own choices. Yeah. That's the effects of, um, you know, of having free will and a choice, is that you, you have to use wisdom to realize, is this choice really what's best for me? And realizing that you're not just in your own world, everything affects everyone else. It's, you know, it basically is a butterfly effect. Indeed. Plus, looking through this film, I definitely got some vibes from the old uh, 70s Wonder Woman show. Yeah. Now, just for everyone watching, I, um, unlike Brian, I'm not cultured in all the wonders of superheroes. So um, I actually, actually, I guess, well, Wonder Woman, well, I'm thinking, you know, because Wonder Woman was set back in. So it's kind of cool to see it back in the origins. But when did when was Wonder Woman first uh, written? Comics, yeah, comics wise, that was during nineteen forty one, I believe. Yeah, because that was during World War Two. Okay, so the movies kind of parallel the actual times that she was set in. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's respecting the the origins of the comic. I like that. Yeah, just uh, the earlier war, but yes, yeah, same thing. Because usually a lot of the superheroes they got started during World War Two. World War Two as a chance for like an escapist of seeing other good guys, you know, beat beat the enemy back then. 
But do you think this could be a new change? Because so far before Wonder Woman, there hasn't been that many female-led um, superhero fil- films before. Yeah, no, I hope this kind of um, puts more into effect. We we kind of see at the end of um, Avengers Infinity War um, where all the, you know, females come out and show like, you know, their own strength. Um, that was pretty cool to see. Mm-hmm. What I like about Wonder Woman is that she she does in herself was strong she what didn't have to say anything like you know i'm strong and i'm a woman stuff like that that wasn't necessary to address we just see that in her own character um so that was really encouraging for me to see so i would love to see more like that on in cinema yeah i i agree because it's interesting that it's kind of going back to like original formula for superhero telling so to speak because Nowadays, a lot of them are mostly anti-heroes or, or people with that have like a destiny or something. Feel like it's something that's been ri- written in stone. But for hers, it's just, it's just cause like there's like no, no deep reasoning. She just has a great sense of love, love equality. And I think we really need more of that in the world. Yeah, and that's a. Uh she honestly serves as a great model, you know, not just for girls or for women, but for everyone to see, you know, being a hero, it, you even see, you know, in her, in Diana, Diana's upbringing, that it wasn't about that she had like superhuman strength or everything, because everyone on the Amazon was equal in that. What they prized most about everything else was integrity and honor and caring for one another. And that's, to me, what really makes a hero to focus on those things. Agreed. As far as the opposite of that, what did you think of uh, for Cheetah? Cheetah. I have many opinions, sorry to say, not the best opinions on it. Um, again, it wasn't until I talked to you before that I realized that Cheetah was actually a um, a character in the comic books. Because I'm like, well, this is a choice that they made it seems a bit random um I think it was pretty smart how they gave her that origin story how it was done I felt like it wasn't as smooth and fluid in the movie I oh my gosh I don't know where to begin on what to say so I don't know if there's anything particular so I don't take up too much time talking about her yeah I mean I've I feel like in terms of for arch rival there's always supposed to be like the opposite to another to one another like for Surban's all about like with hope and Lu- Lex Luthor is more about with greed and power same with Batman with ju- with um justice and order and Joker more like for chaos and destruction so for Cheetah she basically has to represent essentially jealousy yeah no I think um they developed her really well it was I like how they put um Diana and her both in the beginning and you see them like on an equal ground like they're both where they're kind of like alone um you know their life is pretty much their work um but you see like where they're different like diana you know she kind of doesn't really care about how she's perceived whereas um cheetah i forget what her her character's name before she became a cheetah is um but you see that she's on the same place, but she accepts her role in that position with a lack of confidence and self-esteem. Um, and then you see how when she's given a similar, more similar position to where Diana is with the power, how that kind of um, takes her over. And it's like, this is what Diana would be if she didn't have her, her morals and integrity. It's really mm-hmm. interesting to see that dynamic grow. Yeah. I always felt iffy about like why make into a cheetah, but I guess they're kind of going more for the whole like um, discovering some kind of curse and turning into some kind of uh, creature, so to speak. Yeah, I guess also with with cheetahs, it's funny. I actually grew up loving cheetahs, but um, you know they're one of the fastest animals. They're a predator. They're hunting. Um, also, their their print of their fur is gorgeous. So I guess it kind of reflects that kind of like that savageness of like, you know, they're, they're gorgeous animals, look how much they have, but you know, hunting down and, you know, just getting like wild and um, like undomesticated. 
in their approach to how they obtain what they want in life. That yeah, that now that actually makes a lot more more sense because I didn't know much about for she has animal background so to speak except for the speed. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much all people focus on, but yeah. <laughs> Although now after movie, I can never take Apex Predator line so seriously. I am still replaying that line in my head, and I can't help but smile. <laughs> Just like I want to be an Apex Predator, like one's never seen. I want to be an Animorph, and I'm like. I mean, I know power corrupts, but that's, um, that's wow. And then Maxwell's like, you want to be a furry? Okay, I'm going to turn into a cheetah. I got you, girl. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know if you had to give her bad consequence, even though she's kind of your girl, but not, but that happened. And then she, it's like, so here's what's going on with that is, um, I think it was absolutely marvelous how they foreshadowed at the beginning when she first meets Diana. And Diana's wearing the cheetah print heels. Yeah. And then we forget about that for a while. And then to um, show uh, Kristen Wick's character, her progression into becoming this like selfish power hungry, you know, hunting down more power cheetah. Um, they incorporated more of that animal design into her wardrobe. But then I'm like, why is she in like creepy graffiti alleys wearing a giant fur coat and knee high boots like this looks so wrong and so she looks like Giselle from the Broadway musical Cats the raggedy old diva cat <laughs> and then with the wish she turns into the horrid CGI movie Cats <laughs> like so um yeah that happened <laughs> that's all I can say <laughs> yeah I was like uh 50 50 on the CGI thing I mean that's kind of what happened like in terms of these curse sometimes you you know you turn into like it's like a were werewolf kind of situation but yeah I, I they didn't really prepare the audience at all for that so i'm just like meow 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 as soon as i see her on trying to be so fierce i'm like i'm sorry krista wake she did she did wonderfully in her role you know oh, yeah. if i was to have that role like i would do the same thing i'm just like yeah i'm a cheetah i'm a kitchen but just and also like it took incredible cgi it's just that for that particular case i just as an audience member was not prepared to see that and so i just can't help but giggle yeah i know i'm just glad at least initially she has had just wore the fur, fur print because it's kind of a callback to originally where she just wear essentially just a cheetah costume before they decided to go with the whole animal transformation thing because i would have preferred some kind of like a mixture like maybe she was still wearing that just that maybe slowly but sure surely she kind of transforms but not as like have, have yeah maybe so not like full-on cheetah i could see that yeah because i feel like with some of these writers like they want to put some stuff on that only the comic book fans will know and not so much like what newcomers will will see unless, right. they're, unless and... they're good with that I know, like, at least for me, you know, I'm one of the people who got introduced really to superheroes through movies, and that's still the only way I take them in. So, you know, it's great to look back and be like, oh my gosh, here's the, how they got the idea for this character and the origin. But knowing that your audience is pretty much half and half with how they're coming into the movie theater. Yeah. I just, who Apex Predator. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, we might see her again in the third movie if they go, if they're gonna go with. Are that, they bro. preparing a third movie? Oh yeah, and like not too long after it premiered on Christmas, they got the green lit for a third movie. Though I hear it's gonna be in the modern times now. Oh, I mean that makes sense, especially seeing the jump between you know the first one I think took place in the the forties, right, and oh. then the seventies. So that would make sense to have it more in modern times. Yeah. That'd be really well, cool. technically the nine uh nineteen tens for the first movie, so that's even a bigger jump. Okay, I see. Oh, that's right, the original. Yeah, so it all falls into place. That's cool. Yeah, plus I hear the script's going to be written to um, add some aspects onto how, um, the, with the effects of the COVID uh, pa pandemic, so to speak. Oh, I like that. Yeah, because that's like, as much as people want to escape that, that's something that is heavily affecting our world. Like, you know, they dealt with the world wars and all that. You know, I'm sure they wanted to escape that. That was part of their reality. So it's like, you know, 
in a way it's like kind of addresses like, you know, yes, this is something I'm dealing with, something I can relate to. And, you know, again, looking to Diana as, you know, our super role model, like what's the best way to approach our world today? So that's mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah. Though for the third way, that's probably, we're probably not going to have Steve Trevor appear in that one unless it's like a dream sequence or something. Yeah. I think it's time that we let him go. That was so sad when they said goodbye. Oh my word. <laughs> yeah, that was, but it is kind of weird how he got back to life, but magic. Yeah. I mean, I, it was a very interesting choice and I like it. Um, but it makes you wonder, okay, so again, with all wishes comes with consequences. Diana's was, you know, she gets her man, but her man is, you know, possessing another man's body and what happens to that guy. And then she's also, you know, has her powers being slowly taken away from her. So it, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's something I'm like, what, what happened to that dude? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know because i mean granted he, he didn't have his original body so it's like they can just like rematerialize it out of thin air even though they destroyed missiles out of thin air as if they would never existed <laughs> but right so it's like we can allow some magic but this magic no, too magic <laughs> god i mean that uh, makes me wonder though how many body swapping movies were there in the 80s yeah. Oh goodness. There's a lot. I mean, you and I grew up with uh, Freaky Friday, you know, with Lindsay Lohan and Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis, oh, you know, yeah. it's like, again, like with this movie, you know, kind of goes back to that, you know, the, the idea of what if you got whatever thing you wished for, it's like, there's, I think we're seeing more and more. There's so many movies over time. It's like, oh yeah, this movie that I like thinks really cool. My parents saw it back in their day with this movie, you know? So it, it's interesting to see how some things get recycled but if it's done well, it, you know, it gives you like a new fresh look on it. Yeah. Or even with the movie, uh, big with, with, uh, Tom Hanks, once he comes to Dulles, right, like, yeah. I'm sure lots of people are commenting like, um, are you sure, are you sure about this? Because he's still a kid inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I just feel like back then people weren't, um, so critiquing on social standing, so to speak, on how yeah, on now done. everything's like has hyper focus on it. <laughs> oh well, what can you do? <laughs> well, we'll see. Hopefully, Warner Brothers gets on track with everything because this shared DC universe is uh, it was kind of a bit of a mess. That essentially Wonder Woman had to clean up. <laughs> yeah. So remind me, because again, I'm more in tune with Marvel. So what's going on with DC? Well, because of how big Marvel managed to get by 2012 with having the Avengers, DC thought they could just jump ahead where they did Man of Steel, which is a more modern reinterpretation of Superman. But instead of doing a single individual movie for a hero, they decided to go with mash them all together within two movies. Oh, you mean like with uh, with Justice League or just with like two big Man of Steel movies? Oh, after Man of Steel, they went right to... Dawn of Justice, which was a Batman versus Superman thing, but... Oh, right. I remember that. Yeah, but through there, they introduced Wonder Woman, as well as a few, up, a few other characters that would be part of the League, but small roles. And then, after her her solo movie, they went to Justice League, and that was met with um, mild success. Hopefully, the Snyder Cut version will do better, but we'll find out. Okay. Well, I hope so, because Wonder Woman on its own, I think, was great. But yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, because honestly, I feel like they could have done just like solo movies in a, in a row before making a big uh, group setup, but right. Oh, well. I mean, I guess like they're like kind of rushing to like you know, um, beat their competition or kind of like hint to people like here's all the people we're introducing, but in a way, it kind of cuts it out because when you get like solo movies, it makes you wonder, well, what character they're gonna do next? What's gonna happen? Where's the Easter egg? That kind of thing. Oh, so yeah. I can see like how that approach might be preferable. Yeah, that's why I'm, I guess I'm 50-50. Most people are, were, oh, I've seen commenting on how, like, they should not have rushed it. They should have just done what Marvel done. But but for DC, like, some of these characters, they're kind of well-known in other aspects. Because Marvel is more famous through um through the live-action m- movies more so than any other, other medium, at least 
up before 2008 anyway. Because now there's going to be more Marvel shows with um, WandaVision, um, I think even a Falcon and Loki show coming out on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Do you mind, can we actually talk about WandaVision for a second? Because I just remember seeing the trailers and just the trail alone, I thought it was interesting concept how they're taking it. Oh yeah, I actually managed to see the first two episodes. Oh really? What do you think? Like you said, it's definitely very interesting, especially if you like um, I Love Lucy or um, uh, what's the other one? I Dream of a Genie. Right. Because you don't really get a sense of what's going on exactly, but I guess somehow Vision is back to life and he and Wanda are living a happily married life, but for some reason can't remember how this started or why they're in this kind of setting, so to speak. Okay, so they're aware that they're like in a 50s kind of world. Well, at least she is. I'm not sure about Vision just yet. Okay, so we're seeing the trail. I'm like, okay, we went from like super hardcore war superhero stuff and then like black and white picket fence apple pie in the oven like what's going on so yeah i guess it's cool if it's like maybe some kind of like simulation or like her she's like daydreaming stuck in a coma i have no idea yeah because at the end of the episode you see that someone is watch someone is watching them from like some kind of control room or something so i'm not sure (laughs) yeah and um and you're hearing voices like someone trying to contact Wanda to see what's going on. So this might be a side effect of her powers, especially wanting Vision back so badly. Yeah, maybe she's trying to like connect with him if he's like maybe out there somewhere. I don't know. But I also remember seeing the trailers um, because I know a little bit about comics. I saw there's a clip where um, Scarlet Witch and Vision, they're in their original comic wardrobe. I yeah. thought that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, something tells me that's probably like a Halloween kind of episode, like as far as for like a costume party or something. Oh, that'd be clever. But yeah, I just remember like seeing like it just the vibe, it, like it was very much, it's more seemed, because I know Marvel's owned by Disney, but the WandaVision, it seemed very much like Disney, like cute and fun. Whereas, you know, in the movies, it was like very hardcore and serious. So it's like, Oh no, this is a horrible knockoff. What are they doing? But hearing that there seems to be more something going on in the background that that makes me feel better about it. <laughs> oh yeah. And I like how for each episode it transitions. Like the first one was set in the 50s with the hairstyle and everything. Then the second episode transitions to the 60s where Wanda doesn't wear like those um that big skirt and the short um hairstyle back then. It's now wearing actual pants, and then at the end of it, pants. It trans- yes. <laughs> but at the end of it, it transitions to where it's in color now. Oh wow, they are doing that really quickly then. So then I wonder how long, like how many seasons they're going to be doing it for. Well, usually with these streaming shows, they last for about like eight to ten episodes. Oh, I, I see. Okay. Well, that's cool. Then you can kind of get along with the story. Okay. Well, cool. I'll see if I can uh, check it out. Sounds good. Yeah, it's definitely good to watch, especially I like how the opening intros, it's a parody off of some of the um, shows of each decade. I love it. Yeah, because I grew up watching TV and land. So that's that's really cool. <laughs> Same. I always remember I, I, lo- I Love Lucy more than any of the old shows. Oh, how could you not? She She's very impressionable. <laughs> yeah. Well, second to Andy Griffin, because my dad always used to watch that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I just hear the whistling right now in my head. (laughs) Yep, same. (laughs) But the other shows for uh, Marvel, they're going to be more so kind of that big, serious kind of thing. Yeah, sounds good. But it's nice to see, like, you know, what different genres they can get into. Give us something new. Because after a while, it's like, you know, yes, we get it, more superheroes. So I think that's pretty smart of them. Yeah, and plus, I mean, you gotta give everyone a story, not just the big leagues. True. It's like, um, like I keep saying, I wish I could like see more about Hawkeye's background. Like, I'm glad that they're um they're doing more on um on Black Widows. I haven't seen that yet, but um, it's like those characters you see for a long time. It's like you kind of grow with them, and you go, okay, I want to know more about you. I know Hawkeye's at least, you know, he's a family guy, so it doesn't seem like his is too interesting. But it's like. You know that, but you still want to get to know him more. Oh, yeah, because he may not be getting a movie, but he is getting his own show, too. Yes! 
Yeah, though from looks of it, it's more of, I guess, passing the mantle, mantle I think, or something. Okay. So to speak. I mean, I, obviously it's still going to be the lead, but probably more so like training, training someone new to take on his place. Oh, that's cool. I wonder if it's maybe his... I was going to say, I wonder if it's his daughter, because I know in, again, uh, Avengers Endgame, um, he called his daughter Hawkeye or something, so. <laughs> yeah, that could be yeah. possible. Could be possible, though, from what I've seen with some screenshots, there looks to be some other girl uh, pl- taking on the role of Proje, so plus he probably wouldn't want, like, any family member to, like, take on that kind of life. This is true. But hey, another woman uh, hero. That's pretty cool. Agree. Agree, because have you, just morning, have you ever seen the Captain Marvel movie? Yes, I have. What are your thoughts on, on for that for that one? Oh, wait, sorry. I it was like Captain America. Yes. No, Captain Marvel. I saw some of it. I saw some of the beginning from what I saw of that. I thought it was pretty cool. I got the gist of it, like how like her mind's being taken over by like aliens or something. Um, I remember thinking it was really cool, like how she's being all serious and everything. Then she like gets plopped down to like uh, the world in like what, like the the 90s, I think it was. And we see a blockbuster back in its rightful place. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool to see um, the origins, but I didn't feel like it was forced of like, oh, here's all this cool stuff we can do. It's just like, finally, we're getting some answers and seeing like how everything began. So I thought that was really, really cool. Yeah, it was definitely pretty enjoyable. I mean, nothing too original, so so to speak. And plus, I don't think she deserves like all 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 like the hate comments I've been see- seeing sometimes or some people like bashing on her on, on the news for a while ago. I mean, she, I think she did the character pretty well. Oh yeah. I remember hearing that too. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's not much you can do. Like if you want to portray, you know, a very strong, um, you know, female superhero. Um, I know I think people are saying like, she was like kind of like acting like a feminist sort of way. I don't, I don't see how that happened. She was just, you know, doing her character which was she was doing her best to protect you know her her people and all of that so she just you know came out in a very forceful way you know that kind of strength whereas say to compare with uh with wonder woman she's also very strong but she has more of like maybe a kind you know calm demeanor where she doesn't need to be like in in fight mode but Mm -hmm. you know i think both were, were powerful performances yeah, for yeah, for both sides, they managed to take female superheroes to a new direction. Cause before either two got their solo films, any other attempts were met with really bad or mixed mixed reviews. Hmm. Yeah. Well, hopefully now the world is, you know, ready to see the wonderful diversity of female superheroes and all the ways they come in. You know, some are going to be more strong and forceful and grr, and others are going to be more, you know, sweet and that you know that that quiet strength. But they're all good. Yeah, same with even the directors, because I'm not sure for Captain Marvel, but I know for Wonder Woman, they ha- they had a female director. And for the first one, she didn't have much experience with them um, in terms of the action, action superhero genre, but she was a fan of the character, and now she's kind of a household, household name. That is awesome. Yeah, so much that for the second one, she even got to uh, co-write this as well. Oh, that's so cool. No, it's great to see, again, just more diversity in, in all aspects, you know, for me, especially entertainment. That's that's really cool to see. Yeah, plus also recently there was this, um, I know you haven't watched it, but there's a new season for the Batwoman on CW, and they definitely took a unique approach because for the, they had an initial actress to be the lead, but she quit because she couldn't, it was a bit too stressful for her, and she had a physical injury, so they had to take the char- character route. But instead, we have a new girl entirely to be Batwoman. Not someone from the comics or anything. This is, like, er- completely original. Oh, that's cool. No, it's... What's really awesome um, with that is um, I always like seeing creative solutions and approaches because it forces you to make something new that otherwise would have not existed. Um, So I just, I love seeing, you know, the human mind being able to, you know, go past, you know, its, you know, preconceived limits 
and give us something new and exciting. Agree, because usually when, when uh, someone leaves, they always have to like recast to like find someone else to be like her, but like it's not going to be the same actress. So it's like some people are going to be left left kind of um, miffed about that. It's like, why couldn't we have the same person? Right. Yeah. No, I remember like seeing like a, a, a sequel to movie and the main actress was changed. Everyone else is saying like, this isn't right. You're not fooling me. Yeah. Yeah. N- no, not unless you find. I mean, maybe, maybe my, maybe a stunt double because usually for stunt doubles they make sure they find someone that looks very similar. Yeah, but still, it's like as a viewer, you realize they're trying to make it seem like everything's fine, everything's the same, but it's not. And no matter how great they perform and they can be really well, you're focused on I've been betrayed. Who is this person? So it, it kind of sucks that we're conditioned that way, but. Yeah. Plus, it makes you wonder about like, all the stress for any a- actors to lead in some, in a in an action kind of role. Like, you know, it's, whether it's through the phys- physical or even the m- mental stress, especially for episode formats to do like every day, like long hours for months at a time. Yeah, no, that's that's a real dedication. Um, yeah. And like strength of body, mind and all of that. Um, I mean, in a positive, it keeps you in character and being more devoted to it but then you also have to make sure that you balance that but you know just to maintain your sanity yeah um so that's that's the sacrifice of the arts Def- definitely well I mean, if they do recast um kate kings i think that's the fir- first first one. i mean hopefully hopefully it's someone that's not too different from the first first one but yeah we'll, we'll see how that goes we will Anyway, I'll say that's our time for now. So thank you for joining me on this podcast. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'll catch all you viewers next time on Star Labs Confidential. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And if you want to see any more of my guest works, be sure to click on the links below to see both Buttercup, along with her recent film, Not So Silent Night, available on Amazon Prime. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Catch you later.